The 1991 World Indoor Singles Final. Corsi against Australia's Ian Shubank. This man has got to change it. He's gone a bowl wider now. He wants almost the same length as his previous bowl. And he'll rest out Richard Corsi's shot ball. And he's very close to doing it. Never mind resting the shot ball out as he reached the jack. And that is the shot. Brilliant stuff. The quality of play in the 1991 final was outstanding. Both players continually outdoing the other. Good coaching and long hours of practice were paying off on the biggest stage of all. Corsi's forehand, going for the trail. Can he get back? I think he's just about done it. Oh, so close. Look where he's finished. Almost in perfect. Brilliant exhibition of balls. Hello, Carol. Hello, Richard. Good to meet you. Hello, Rosie. Richard, nice to see you. Hello, Andy. Hi, Doctor. Hello, Maurice. Nice to meet you, Richard. Welcome today to Fintry. And today, we're going to have a look at your delivery actions. That's the first thing we're going to start with today. Every bowler's delivery action is very unique in their own right. Many coaches will tell you that your left hand, when delivering the ball, must be placed onto your left knee. That really is incorrect. I'll demonstrate to you, I actually deliver a ball. My left hand is nowhere near my knee. I'll just demonstrate to you. As you can see, I'll use my left hand to balance me here. I'm perfectly balanced, and I'm quite comfortable with that. So what's right for one is not right for another. In the game of bowls at the top level, about this much is physical application. The rest is mental application. And it's about this much physical application that must be correct. I want to make sure that you have that bit correct. I'll have a look at your deliveries. If there's anything I can correct, I'll try my best to do so. Okay? If you'd like to come onto the mat. Good, good balance. One on the back now, Carl. That's good, Carol. Nice timing, well balanced. Just a slight bump, but that's something we'll be able to correct in the not too distant future. But all in all, well done. Okay, Andy? Same again, one on the floor and one on the back. One on the back. Okay, Andy. The only thing I can see is that your head is looking down at the ground and then back up again. So therefore, you're lifting your head on the shot. Try and focus yourself onto a picture, something on the bank, some aiming point. that will clearly go in. You'll focus it. It will help your momentum, it will help your movements, your head will stay still, but that's something that we're going to work on. Okay? Okay, Rosie? Good delivery, nice follow through. Well done, Rosie. Well balanced, nice delivery, and a lovely follow through. Well done. We're, we don't have much to correct there. Okay. Okay, Murray, if you could come in, thanks. Okay, same again. One on the forehand, one on the backhand. And on the back. Again, Murray, that's a very good delivery. You're well balanced. Nice clean follow through. Not a lot can go wrong with it. Okay, well done. Andy, if you could come back in. I feel as though we have a bit to do with Andy. We're going to see if we can correct the movement on your head. 
We've now established the aiming point, okay? If you can keep staring at that aiming point, there's absolutely no way your head will move. So it's staring, 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 picking the aiming point up. Your head won't move, okay? Have a shot. Okay, staring, staring. You're Andy. Okay, Andy, does that feel any better for you? I don't feel okay. Right then, that's good then. If I could just bring you all in at this point, and uh, we're going to move on to the cluster exercise. Um, this is a, a valuable exercise. Holes is a good adjustment, okay? We're adjusting from one ball to the next, on to the next. But before we can do that, it's important that we can repeat what we've already done. In this exercise, I'm going to try and demonstrate first. We're going to try and get a cluster at the other end of the green just to show the repetition of the shots one after the other, okay? Okay, I've now set my mark on where I want the other three to finish and I'll try and give you a commentary on how they're doing. Yeah, that's the second one away. That doesn't feel too bad. Maybe shorter length. But on the line. Hoping to gain a yard on that one. Again, shorter length. Finishing beside the second one. Again, on the line. And again, that doesn't feel too bad. On the line. Back into the centre. And that's a reasonable wee cluster. OK? You set your mark, Carl. Again. Three bowls later, what improvement has Carol made? Yep. Good line. Good weight. Certainly going to be near your first one this time. That's a fair, fair line on all of them. Rosie has already played, so now it's Murray's turn. Better Murray and target here. That's good, mate. Yard over. That's good stuff. I think you're blaming yourself. You're not bad. That's very good, Murray. Well done. Good stuff. What we'll do now is we'll go up and we'll just see how close the clusters have gathered, okay? Now, as we can see, it just wasn't as easy as we thought. I've been pretty fortunate. I've managed to get four here, and if I was playing in a game and playing to that, I'd be quite happy that I was managing to put these four together. Can I just say, Murray, for a first attempt, this is Murray's here. One, two, three, four. That's a very good first attempt. All within a fairly small radius. A very good attempt. Again, Carol, if we just point out yours. One, two, three. Three nice balls. Fairly good group. Unfortunately, this one down here, okay, that could easily be tension. You know, just tension up in the wrist. And that's easily just slacking off. Feel free and relax. Good group. Rosie, 
Now, there's quite a variation in roses here, but as we can see, they're all in a perfectly good line, and that's good, Rosie. You're picking the line very good. Again, quite a distance, but not bad for a first attempt. Um, all in all, quite a good exercise. All right, Murray. This first adjustment exercise, I'm going to play my first ball behind the jack. I'm going to then increase my weight with each of the following balls. You'll then do the same. The one with the shortest distance from first ball to last ball will declare the winner. Okay, I'll try oh. my best, yep. Okay. I'll be brave and I'll go first, okay? Right. I want my first ball just behind the jack. Okay, I want to increase on that, not by too much, just in case you beat me. <laughs> I failed to increase at all. Again, this time I've been successful in increasing. Just past the balls. That's quite a good distance. I'll consider that a good adjustment. Fairly happy with that. OK, Murray, on you go. That'll be quite hard to beat, I think. I don't know. He's playing well today. Heavy. How's that feel, Murray? I don't think, I don't think I sent that one as further as the first one. And you're back to the clusters here. Aye. Uh, you're looking for two feet on your last one. How's it feeling? Felt a bit better, but... I think you've done think the same again. I think it's tighter. Come on, Emory. Two feet. Two feet in the next one. That's more two feet. <laughs> That's a big adjustment. Two yards. <laughs> we'll go and have a look at that, eh? Okay. Generally, in a course of a game, you often find that the jack is moved, and you generally do have to adjust you know, by margins. And that's um, part of the reason for the exercise. As you'll see here, I've increased by about two feet here, and again about a foot here. And the second one was pretty poor, but quite happy with that as an adjustment. Here, same pace, Murray. This one would have actually reached further, yeah. obstructed by your own ball. And again, a very large adjustment. The jack's <laughs> been moved quite considerably yeah. with the last one. Well, all in all, a good exercise to practice. In 1988, you married Suzanne, Richard. Uh, had you been going out with her long? Um, I started going out with Suzanne in 1986, and obviously she followed me at the Commonwealth Games and things like that, so she knew what she was in for when uh, she was watching the bowls. <laughs> was she a bowler herself, or was she interested in bowls? Um, no, she wasn't a bowler, but she certainly took a keen interest, and she supported me fully. And what about now? Is she? Well, she's obviously your biggest fan, I take it, but does she come and watch you play? Well, we've got the wee guy now, you know, so it's a wee bit difficult. But certainly when we were first going out and when we first got married, um, Suzanne was everywhere, you know, Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, all the places. And as you said, you've now got young Cameron. How has fatherhood changed you, Richard? Oh, it's great, Diggy. Um, I really enjoy it. You know, you look forward to coming home and seeing them. 
Mm -hmm. Hence the reason I didn't want to go away as much. So but if you have to, you have to. Does he recognise you on television? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yet. No. <laughs> You've also had a change in your occupation, really, haven't you? Let, let's talk about your relationship with the post office and Royal Mail. How, how did all that come about? Um, it came about this year. It went through a, a sort of change, you know, as in all businesses are changing. And they got me off the streets about three years ago, as from Dover and Mail, and used me on a sort of appearance line on a PR role. It sounds the perfect setup because every top sportsman is looking for, for good sponsorship these days, I suppose. And it seems to have worked out well for you. Yeah, it has. Um, certainly looking at things in the future, you know, the game of balls doesn't look to be on the up, it's on the decline on the television side of things. So it's something to fall back on if anything goes wrong in the, in the game. Talking about big television tournaments, let's talk about your first world title in 1989. What are your memories of, of that week at Preston? Um, I certainly didn't expect to win as comfortably as I did because obviously Wally had been queued up the previous champion in the semi-final. I was expecting a difficult game. But um, I played my own game. I was playing well. Um, I never considered I was playing Wally Wood. You know, I just got on with my, what I had to do myself. Do you have to do that in the green, Richard? Just yeah. Block out who your opponent is and whether you like him or dislike him? Yeah, you've got to be pretty evil on the green, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay having a drink with him after it if you've won and... If you've got beaten, you know, it doesn't matter, but when you're on the green, you've just got to get away from them, you know. You hate them as much as you can. 1990 also took you to the Commonwealth Games in Auckland, and, and a very special thrill before the, the Games even began. Yeah, I was uh, selected to hold the, the flag for Scotland, um, and with Edinburgh being the Games in 86, Scotland were the first team to walk in to the stadium in New Zealand, and obviously I was the very first person to walk in. It was a great honour for me holding that flag. I'm now going to talk about singles practice, and I say singles because we get more practice playing singles, we play more balls, and it's much more beneficial, I think. When we're playing a singles game, if I'm playing a singles game, I'll try and set myself a target. You know, I'll have a purpose to play for. For instance, if my opponent's first ball, and I would deliberately place this so that I would give myself a target to beat, we have the side toucher, Okay, which is quite easy to beat. We have the back toucher, again, easy to beat. But hardest of all is the front toucher. Okay? That is a difficult shot to play. And many people will be rather rash at that, have a bit go. The real, the real way to play it is to be rather conservative. One, get one close, for two reasons. If we have one close, we're not going to lose a count. And secondly, if it is by the jack, it's in a receiving position to receive the jack. So if I was happen to put my second ball into here, okay, one, I'm not going to lose a count. And two, my second ball coming up, if I was to touch it, like so, I'm now in a receiving position and I've scored the shot. Without any question, if you're playing singles practice, set up a front toucher and give yourself a target of four balls at trying to beat that without driving. And it's quite a good exercise for you. One of the things about practicing in singles is to put a condition and give yourself a target to beat. One of the conditions that I like is using the back edge of the ditch, drawing to the edge, using that as our jack, nearest to the edge of the ditch without going in, is going to score shots. The reason being, during the course of a game, the jack always ends up in the ditch at some point in the game. And when we go to play to draw to the edge of the ditch, nine times out of ten, we're dropping in. The reason why, we don't practice. So therefore, if we put this purposeful practice into place, hopefully, if we're practicing that, we'll be able to stay on the ditch as soon as we can. We're going to try that, OK? Rosie, if you'd like to play a ball, Drawing to near as the edge of the ditch as you possibly can. Okay, Rosie, speak to me. I think it's a bit heavy. In fact, I'm certain it's a bit heavy. No. It doesn't look bad to me. I thought I'd thrown it quite heavy. That's absolutely superb. Well done. How are we doing, Carl? Well, I certainly got it, but 
don't think it needs it. Good. Well, that's great stuff. Okay, Murray. Come on, the women are taking you to the cleaners here. <laughs> How are we doing, Murray? It was quite good this time. Good stuff, Murray. Follow that, as they say. How are we doing, Andy? But they are. They no, are they are. Stay high, eh? Okay, okay Rosie. Mm. How about this time? Feels better this time. Is that? That's yep. good then. Not so far. <laughs> That's right, your first one you thought you were actually in yeah. when you weren't in at all. Okay, Carol. It's in the ditch at the side. Oh dear. <laughs> right, Murray. How's the pace? I think it should be okay. You certainly look very good to you. This is excellent stuff. Great stuff, Murray. Well done. How are you feeling, Andy? Better than the last one, I think. Very good, Andy. Excellent stuff, mate. Well done. Great stuff. It's always important that when you do go out to practice in singles that you put some type of condition. There's no point in going out and just playing away and just getting fed up. If you can actually displace a jack, play one on the forehand, one on the backhand, short mat, long mat, you're giving yourself some type of challenge because these occasions always arise in a game, whether it's you doing it or your opponent. And 19 out of 10, it's your opponent, and you're generally the one that hasn't practiced. So I would stress, if you're going to practice, put some type of condition and give yourself a challenge. The challenge facing the player playing yellow here is that he lies three shots down at a vital stage of the game. Which shot to play? Well, the answer clearly is the drive. The aim is to pick up the jack, take it into the ditch, and since the driving bowl is obviously a toucher, it counts, and that's two or possibly even three on a measure. This is an exercise where we're going to practice driving. During the course of a game, it's generally all drawing and generally never have to use the drive, but there's always one occasion where we're going to have to drive. And it's nice to have that shot in your armour. And that's why when we're in the practice, we should practice driving. I've set up this small exercise, never ever drive to a bare jack. Always try and put something beside it. Make it about a two and a half foot target on most occasions. We have this area here and if we're in this area all the time we're doing very well and obviously if we're not we're in a little bit of trouble. So the ball coming in, we're going to get a result here, we're going to get a result here. We're going to try this exercise, we said we're going to put the balls up the other end and we're going to try it from here. All right, Rosie, Murray, we're now going to just take it easy here, Rosie. You can't wait, eh? See, there's a bit of devilment in you. We're now going to play the driving practice. This time, as I've explained before, each person driving finds their own speed that they're comfortable using. You don't have to go hell for leather at it. Whatever you find comfortable, that's the speed to use. On you go, Rosie. Good effort. 
little variation this time. On you go again, Rosie. Deserve another shot for that. It was a good effort. Good. Very good. Hold well on. Excellent. Well done. Okay, Murray, show us it wasn't a fluke. Well done again. Great stuff. That's good going. Well done. There's one thing that I would like to stress, is that when we are driving, wherever our left foot goes, I'll try and demonstrate it, the body always follows. Okay, so if we get position correct on the mat, generally try and use your right foot at what you're going to aim at, left foot forward, and the body always follows through. Therefore, you're getting your balance, you're getting your correct line. Good point to remember. I'm going to have one more try at this, and I'll try and demonstrate me going through on it. Okay? I'll slow it down a wee bit. Dive in there. Backswing and true. Okay? Simple as that. Okay? <laughs>